Hello, everyone, and welcome to the EPA WaterSense programs demonstrating WaterSense's water use tool and Energy Star's portfolio manager training. This webinar is being put on as part of the Hotel, and Hotel Challenge training series. I'm Laura Wetzel, a supporting contractor to EPA's WaterSense program, and I will be moderating this presentation. Before we get started, I'd just like to introduce the presenters you'll be hearing from today. Hosting this webinar is Tara O'Hare with the WaterSense program. Tara currently serves as the Implementation and Commercial Outreach Lead for WaterSense. She's also responsible for program operations, partner support, and outreach to commercial and institutional facilities. Tar is currently managing the Hotel Challenge and was responsible for the release of Water Sense at Work, Best Management Practices for Commercial and Institutional Facilities, which you'll be hearing more about during today's presentation. Our second speaker will be Robbie Pickering with ERG. Robbie is an environmental engineer who focuses on water conservation and sustainable facility management. For WaterSense, he supports the product specification development process and has helped develop technical materials to assist the commercial and institutional sector in implementing water saving best management practices. Unfortunately, our third speaker, Andrea Schnitzer from EPA and DOE's Energy Star program, is sick and not actually able to give her presentation. However, she is still on the line uh, to answer help answer questions and so Tara will be covering her slides instead on portfolio manager but Andrea is a national program manager for Energy Star and she has experience working with hotels on energy and water benchmarking projects let's quickly review a few housekeeping items before we really begin the presentation all attendees have been muted to minimize background noise, but if you have a question during the presentation, please just type it into the chat box on the upper right-hand side of your screen. We'll have a dedicated time for Q&A at appropriate breaks throughout the presentation. Lastly, we are recording this webinar for future viewing, and you'll receive an email once it's posted on the WaterSense website. When you do, please feel free to share this recording with any colleagues or business contacts that may benefit from it. Now I'd like to invite Tar O'Hare to review the agenda for today and start us off with an introduction to WaterSense and the Hotel Challenge. Tara? Thanks for those introductions, Laura, and welcome to all of you for joining us today. As Laura mentioned, I'll start by providing a brief overview of the WaterSense program, the intent of the Hotel Challenge, and some rationale for why you may want to reduce water and energy use at your hotel. Then I'll ask Robbie to walk you through a demonstration of our Water Use and Savings Evaluation Tool, or Water Use Tool, and the associated Water Assessment Worksheets. Finally, we will provide you with a brief overview of the Energy Star program and introduce you to Portfolio Manager. At the end of the webinar, I'll quickly review what we've learned and talk about our upcoming trainings. So for those of you who may not be familiar with WaterSense, I'll quickly introduce you to the program. WaterSense is a voluntary program launched in 2006. We bring together a variety of stakeholders to promote water efficiency. We provide consumers with easy ways to save water. Our end goal is to reduce water use and strain on water resources and infrastructure. The WaterSense label, which is displayed here on this slide, provides a simple way for consumers to identify water efficient products homes, programs, and practices. More than 11,000 different models of products have earned the WaterSense label to date. All products receiving the label have been independently certified for water efficiency and performance. As we'll hear later in this presentation, EPA's highly successful Energy Star program focuses on energy efficiency across many sectors, products, and building types. Energy Star is currently celebrating its 20th year and is recognized across the world as a designation of superior energy efficiency. Both WaterSense and Energy Star use a variety of approaches to reach different sectors and markets. In the case of commercial and institutional buildings, WaterSense has developed best management practices to help facilities design, operate, and maintain their buildings and landscapes as efficiently as possible. In fact, WaterSense at Work our best management practices guide for commercial 
and institutional facilities is the focus for this training series. You can see that on the upper left hand side of your slide. WaterSense also partners with many different types of organizations to reach as many people as possible. We are trying to educate everyone as that we can on the importance of behavior change in saving water. Fixtures and technologies can only be efficient if used and operated properly. So here are all of the residential and commercial products eligible for the WaterSense label. The label is generally reserved for products that are that use at least 20% less water and perform as well or better than their, their counterparts. Through 2012, WaterSense has helped consumers save a cumulative 487 billion gallons of water and over $8.9 billion in water and energy costs. While WaterSense's program is focused on developing specifications for water using products, we also work in conjunction with Energy Star for products that use hot water and therefore energy. Water Sense and Energy Star work together to develop the specification for commercial prevent spray valves, which you can see as our newest product on the right hand side. And Water Sense and Energy Star basically are working now to promote uh, these Water Sense labeled products as part of its commercial kitchen program as well. In addition, water factors are included for Energy Star's qualified products that use water like clothes washers ice machines, steam cookers, and dishwashers. So as many of you probably know, it's important to look at water and energy use and savings together since moving, treating, and heating water uses energy. For some products or systems, saving energy is also, also results in saved water. For example, reducing the cooling load of your mechanical equipment to make it more energy efficient will reduce the amount of makeup water you need to add to your cooling tower. When evaluating potential water or energy efficient products, you should evaluate the project's water and energy reduction potential since the combined cost savings can improve your return on investment and will make the project savings estimates more accurate. Also, energy and water utilities offer both rebates and incentives for efficient technologies, so be sure to look into what your utility provides before starting any project with water or energy efficiency. So why might you want to reduce your hotel's water and energy use? First and foremost, as we mentioned, saving water and energy can help reduce operating costs. Water and sewer costs are, have been rising at well above inflation with no signs of slowing down, as have energy costs. As we discussed, saving water can save energy used to heat water and it can improve equipment efficiency, which often reduces maintenance costs and man hours required for repairs. While reducing the bottom line, saving water and energy may also increase your competitive advantage. A recent survey by TripAdvisor found that 79% of travelers place importance on properties implementing eco-friendly practices. And 85% of the U.S. hotelers hoteliers indicate that they are currently have green practices in place. By participating in things like Energy Star's National Building Competition and the WaterSense Hotel Challenge, you have a chance to demonstrate sustainability leadership in your community as well. So to help facility managers and building owners manage and reduce water use in a more specific way, WaterSense is beginning to work with some commercial sectors individually. This year, we're focusing on the hotel sector. WaterSense launched the Hotel Challenge on February 5th of this year. As part of the challenge, WaterSense will provide participants with tools to act, assess water use and savings opportunities, change products, processes to incorporate BMPs, and track water savings. Once your hotel takes the pledge on the WaterSense website, you'll receive emails that include several items to promote your participation, including a participant logo, a signed certificate of participation, and sample language to use in your interim binders, websites, and guest service television. Every hotel that takes the pledge will also receive monthly water saving tips and reminders about WaterSense webinars. The training webinar series, including this webinar, will walk through the best management practices in WaterSense at work that are applicable to hotels and each training will feature a case study showing how hotels have implemented specific measures. 
This presentation is focused on tools, so we will be focusing on that rather than a case study exactly. But we are also preparing several case studies on our website um, to really discuss the successes of hotels that are participating in the challenge. So I wanted to give you all some context on what our conversation is about today by talking a little bit about how Energy Star and WaterSense tools can be used together. So WaterSense and Energy Star's tools and resources can be used to help commercial facility managers and building owners maximize their energy, water, and cost savings. We're discussing both programs today to emphasize the importance of evaluating energy and water together. Before we talk about these tools in greater detail, I wanted to give you some of the context and explain how the tools can be used together to achieve greater efficiencies. WaterSense's water use tool, which we'll be demonstrating in a few minutes, was developed to help hotel operators and facility managers identify and prioritize cost-effective water efficiency projects and best management practices to reduce water and energy use and save money. Energy Star's portfolio manager, is a free online tool for tracking utility data over time. You can track both water and energy data using this tool as well as download more than 150 metrics in template or custom reports for managing your water and energy consumption. The water use tool allows you to put your input your water meter data into the portfolio manager uh, system by an easy data transfer. If you're already tracking your water use with Portfolio Manager, you can easily also transfer your data from Portfolio Manager back to the water use tool. Facilities can use both of these tools together at the same time to improve their performance while tracking their progress. By using the water use tool, you can actually look at the projects that you were um, thinking of doing and calculate some of the potential water savings and energy savings. And then this can be rolled up on a more facility size level with the Portfolio Manager tool to get an overall picture of water use and energy use over time. So these are really great ways to uh, measure and verify your uh, savings and the projects that you've implemented. Before we get into the details of the new water use tool, I wanted to talk through the typical breakdown of hotel water use to provide some context. As you can see, almost half of a hotel's water use comes from guest room sanitary use and hotel laundry. Outdoor water use for irrigation, pools, and spas makes up the next largest portion of a typical hotel's uh, daily water use. Hotels also use a significant amount of water in commercial kitchens and for building, cooling, and heating. As Robbie will discuss, the water use tool will generate hotel-specific opportunities to reduce each of these water end uses. Now let's take a break for questions. Now remember that all attendees are muted just to re reduce background noise during the presentation. So if you have any questions, please type them into the chat box at the right of your screen and we will address them as they are received. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions at this time, so now, Robbie, let's dig right into that water use tool. Hello, everybody. So WaterSense developed two technical tools to assist hotel facility managers and building operators assess, uh, change, and track their water use. The water use tool and the water assessment worksheets. These tools were developed using the information and calculations documented in WaterSense at Work. EPA developed these tools to help hotels easily identify and prioritize water efficiency projects and best management practices. The water use tool and the water assessment worksheets can be downloaded from the WaterSense website, as you see on the screen below. Our first technical webinar in this series focused on assessing and tracking your water use. During that webinar, we discussed that the first step in managing our hotel's water use is to conduct a facility water assessment. A water assessment will help identify key water use areas and water savings opportunities. The water, the water assessment worksheets that WaterSense has developed can be used to guide you through your water assessment. If you need information uh, about water assessment beyond that provided in the worksheets, 
please review Section 1.2 of Water Sense at Work or revisit the Assess, Track, and Realize Payback presentation posted on the Water Sense website with the other webinar recordings. The water assessment worksheets help capture information about water using fixtures and equipment within your hotel and help gather the information needed to populate the water use tool. The worksheets also provide helpful instructions, guidance, definitions, and other information about the entry fields of the tool. To help with data entry into the tool, each water worksheet number corresponds directly to the numbered tab within the water use tool. For example, information collected on the water worksheet three guest rooms will be entered into the three guest rooms tab of the water use tool. This slide shows a list of all the worksheets and corresponding tabs available. The first worksheet covers general facility information. This worksheet is required by all users of the water use tool. The second worksheet assists you in collecting water meter and billing data for your hotel. The remaining nine worksheets that you see on the screen Cover the areas of your hotel that may use water, including guest rooms, public restrooms, guest ice makers and laundry machines, hotel linen laundry, commercial kitchens, commercial dishwashing, HVAC mechanical systems, irrigation, and pool and spas. You'll input all of the information you gathered on the worksheets into the water use tool. The tool takes this information and helps identify estimated water use from each water use area, potential water efficient fixture and equipment retrofit and replacement projects, estimated water energy and cost savings from these projects, estimated project payback period for some projects, and then finally recommended best management practices to also help reduce water and energy use. Now I'll take a minute to walk you through several tabs of the water use tool. Since we're limited on time, we won't be able to cover every tab in detail, but covering these five tabs will show you the different types of input requests and output types. First, to open all the tabs of the water use tool, you'll need to enable macros. For me, I see a security warning with the option to enable macros right above the formula bar. You may be given the option to enable macros in a different way depending on your operating system or version of Excel. If you're unsure how to enable the macros on your machine, consult the Excel help function. So once the macros are enabled, the content of the water use tool will open. You'll want to start by reading the instructions tab. The tab provides a step-by-step -step overview of how to use the tool. As the instructions mention, you'll first need to gather data and information about the specific type of equipment and operations that use water at your hotel. WaterSense has prepared the water assessment worksheets for this purpose. Before we populate this tab, let's take a look at those worksheets. So the facility information tab is, is on your screen now, and we're going to go over that uh, specific worksheet. When you open the worksheets, the first couple of pages provide instructions on how to use them and how to, they interact with the tool. Read the instructions as well for the worksheets before you get started. Next, take a look at the list of worksheets and identify which ones you'll need to fill out. You'll, you should fill out the worksheets applicable to each end use of water at your specific hotel. Gather the appropriate hotel staff and vendors familiar with each water end use to help you complete each worksheet. Print and distribute the worksheets to the members of your team that will be helping you. A list of folks you may want to tap is included here in the worksheet introduction. You may also want to consider contacting your local water and energy utilities for additional technical resources or assistance to help uh, identify rebate opportunities for water and energy efficiency programs. Uh, now scrolling to the facility info worksheet, um, all the hotels that want to use the water use tool must fill out worksheet one. Almost all the calculations within the tool require the basic information about your hotel. For the purpose of this demonstration, I populated a few worksheets with sample data. I'll use this sample data to demonstrate the functionality of the corresponding tabs within the tool. As you can see, the worksheets are numbered to match the tabs of the tool. Let's use the information from worksheet one to populate the tab one facility information. You can see here that there are some instructions at the top of this form. These instructions will help you understand cell shading and features of the water use tool. Once you've read the instructions, 
you can click the hide instructions button at the top of the form to allow you to see more of the form below. The top of the facility info tab asks for some optional information about your facility, such as who prepared this information, where your hotel is located. All optional information requested by the tool is color-coded gray. I'm going to skip this section today since it isn't used for the tool's calculation. Let's fill out in the required cells now, which are designated with blue shading. Uh, the light blue cells indicate required inputs, and dark blue cells indicate required fields that offer drop-down selections. My sample data in indicates that my hotel is 125,000 square feet. It was built in 1989, and there haven't been any significant reservations. If there had been, I'd want to put the year of the significant renovation, if that renovation included changing water-using fixtures like toilets and shower heads. I use natural gas to heat most of my hot water. I do have an electric hot water boiler in my commercial kitchen, but it just serves as my dishwasher, so I'm going to select natural gas here since this is how the majority of my hotel's hot water is used. Uh, I also have 100 guest rooms in my hotel, and we're open all year round, 365 days a year. For this demonstration, I'm going to click the Use Default button to use the default for the average number of guests per room and the average annual occupancy rate. Defaults are available throughout the tool where industry averages exist. However, if be it's best to populate all fields with your hotel-specific information since more accurate inputs will yield more accurate savings and simple payback calculations. For this demonstration, I'm going to also use the default information for my utility rates. This section at the bottom of the facility info form allows me to enter water meters and other water sources at my facility. As an example, I'm going to put in meter labeled landscaping and one labeled main potable. You'll see on the next tab for metering and billing where these names are later identified. The metering and billing tab is designed to mimic Energy Star's portfolio manager. You'll first enter information about your water meters and other water sources here then you'll enter your water use and cost information for each bill on the metering and billing tab. Um, Portfolio Manager has a feature where hotels can upload their water use data via a spreadsheet template that Energy Star provides. The metering and billing tab, shown on the screen now, is set up to mimic that spreadsheet uploader tool exactly so hotels can just copy their information, they enter here, and paste it into the Energy Star spreadsheet. You'll hear more about how to track your water and energy use in Energy Star Portfolio Manager tool in a few minutes. So as you notice in the drop downs, it lists the meters that we had entered on tab one facility information. Um, moving on to the guest rooms and the guest rooms worksheet. Uh, so when we flip back to the worksheet uh, where we were populating our information, we're going to scroll down to its worksheet three. Um, I want to point out some of the features that some of the worksheets offer. As you can see, each worksheet gives you some instructions on how to get started and where to look for the fixtures and equipment discussed within it. The worksheets also provide definitions and helpful information you can use when collecting information on the worksheets and populating the water use tool. If you aren't sure about a field in the water use tool, refer to the worksheets since they'll likely provide more information. There are also some O&M tips that you may want to implement at your hotel sprinkled throughout some of the worksheets. Those are highlighted by the, uh, the green boxes you'll see throughout. On this particular worksheet, you can also see definitions for the types of toilets you may find in your hotel and some instructions on how to evaluate the effective flush volume of a dual flush toilet. There's also an O&M tip in there in the faucet section, as you now see with the green box. At the end of each worksheet, there's also space for you to write notes about malfunctioning equipment, leaks, and operational improvements you identified during your water assessment. As you see, I've noted that there's a running toilet in room 152 and a leaky faucet in room uh, in suite 200. While there are no fields in the water use tool for you to enter this information, these notes should instead be passed along to your operations and maintenance staff to address immediately. Leaks and functioning equipment and malfunctioning equipment should always be addressed immediately to ensure water and oftentimes energy are not needlessly wasted. 
As you can see, I've populated the worksheet with my sample data. So let's go back to the tool and populate the guest rooms tab. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide my instructions so we can see more of the data entry screen. Next to the hide instructions button, you'll also find a reset form button. You can use this button if you want to completely clear your form and start over. The first question asks me if my hotel has shared bathrooms. This is common in hostels and bed and breakfasts, but I run a standard hotel, so I'm going to answer no to this question. Now I'll populate my sample data for toilets, faucets, and shower heads. I have 50 tank type toilets flushing at 3.5 gallons per flush. These are the original fixtures that were installed when my hotel was built in 1989. You'll see as I click on the cell in the existing flush volume column, a hover box pops up. These hover boxes are scattered throughout the tool and provide definitions and more information about some of the data entry fields. Uh, 30 of my toilets, tank type toilets, were also replaced by water sense labeled models that flush at 1.28 gallons per flush. Those were replaced in 2010. I have flush hour valve toilets as well in 20 of my guest rooms. They flush at the original 3.5 gallons per flush. Uh, in addition to toilets, I have 50 laboratory faucets that flow at 2.2 gallons per minute. And then I have 50 that are placed with water sense labeled faucets that flow at 1.5 gallons per minute. Um, for showers now, 25 of my shower heads flow at uh, the water sense maximum of 2.0 gallons per minute. Um, although I have 75 additional shower heads, I'm going to key in 70 so I can show you another feature of the tool. These shower heads are original to my hotel, but I'm not sure what their flow rate is. So I'm going to use the default value here. The default value will populate a flow rate based on the year of construction or major renovation they keyed in on the facility info tab. Note that when I use the default, it replaces all of the flow rates in the column with that default. I need to go back and change the flow rate for the first 25 shower heads I entered back to 2.0. Now here's that feature I want to show you. When I click show results, I'll get an error telling me they don't have enough shower heads keyed in. Since I said I have 100 rooms and no shared bathrooms, the water use tool wants to be sure I've accounted for all my shower heads. These error boxes are also included throughout the tool to point out when you're missing necessary information. I'll go ahead and change that 70 to 75, and when I click show results, my results appear. The results table are color-coded in purple. The first section under results on all tabs provide an estimate of your current water use for each water end use included on the tab. The next section provides estimates for potential water savings and payback if you were to replace your old inefficient fixtures with water efficient models. If you scroll down to the product replacement detail and cost section, the green table provides information of water sense recommendations for what you should replace. This table provides information on the number of potential replacement, which is equal to the number of fixtures that currently flows or flushes higher than the recommended efficient flow rate or flush volume, uh, that said flush volume or flow rate, and the potential cost of the new fixture. You can update this table by entering the number of fixtures you plan to replace, if, di if different than the potential. The actual flush volume or flow rate of the product you intended to saw, actual product cost information, and any rebate you may get from your water or energy utility to offset the product cost. For this example, I'll update the shower heads row with some of my specific information. As I update the green table, watch the shower heads row in the potential water savings and payback period table above, which is the purple row there. I only want to replace 25 of my shower heads, but I'm going to replace them with models that flow at 1.5 gallons per minute. Each shower head cost me $20, but my local utility will rebate the entire cost of each shower head. All this hotel specific information will be factored into the potential water savings and payback period table above to yield the most accurate estimates for your project. The table provides an estimated project cost, which in this case will be zero because my, my rebate cost offsets utility costs. Uh, it also provides the water savings, water cost savings, energy savings, and energy cost savings. Uh, the, the annual total cost savings, as well as the potential payback period for this project. Directly below this table are a couple best management practices for you to consider as well. 
At the bottom of the form, the red table shows all the supporting data and assumptions used in the calculations on this tab. If you think you have more accurate facility or equipment specific data or assumptions than the values provided, you can adjust the data to provide the most accurate recommendations and savings estimates. Uh, the restore default supporting data button will erase any changes you make and restore all the defaults. If you adjust any day in this section, all the calculations above will adjust accordingly. The structure of the public restrooms and guest ice and laundry tabs are similar to the structure of this guest room tab we just went over. So let's skip to the linen and laundry tab, which provides slightly different outputs. For the first question, my sample hotel does not have a towel and linen reuse program. So I'll select no from the drop down. We do have in-house laundry equipment, and I'm not sure how many pounds are washed per day, so I'll use the default value provided. Now I'll fill out the table about my laundry equipment. As a reminder, more information about the drop-down selection options and each of these data input fields is included in the worksheet that correspond with this tab. Now when I click Show Results, after inputting the information, so I don't have a water cycling system, and I don't have an ozone system. I have two of them. Now when I click Show Results, I see the estimate of my current water use. And this time I see a list of recommended best management practices and potential water savings instead of the potential water savings and payback uh, estimate table from the previous tab. For some of the water use categories where equipment may be custom built for your facility or where there isn't a standard set of water use assumptions for the equipment, the water use tool will generate a list of best management practices that include general water savings estimates within them instead of providing detailed cost savings and payback estimates. For example, since I selected that my washer extractor did not have a recycled water system, one best management practice uh, is to consider installing one. Within the BMP, it states that a simple recycling system can generally save between 10 and 35 percent of water use, while a complex system can generally save between 85 and 90 percent. The BMP and the tool then translate these general percent savings into rough gallons of savings possible at my facility based on my current estimated water use. At the bottom of the form, you can similarly adjust the data and assumptions used on this tab as you did with the guest rooms tab. Uh, so now let's click over to the HVAC and Mechanical tab. I want to show you this tab because the input requests are a little different than the others. This tab and the Irrigation and Pools and Spas tabs guide you through a specific series of questions to generate the recommended best management practices. The corresponding worksheets guide you through the same set of questions. So if you gather da the data needed to fill out the worksheets, you'll be in good shape. So the questions on the worksheet will correspond to what we're about to go through on the tab. Um, so now I do have a cooling tower, two actually. Um, so I'll select yes for the first question. And uh, each of the cooling towers is 150 tons each. Um, so I'll enter a combined 300 tons of capacity uh, as the hover box suggests. I do not currently meter my makeup water or my cooling tower blowdown water, but if I did, the tool would ask me for the total gallons added to or just discharged from uh, the cooling tower each year. I control my blowdown manually on, uh, based on my conductivity readings. Um, I looked at my cooling tower water chemistry reports, and they do not currently list uh, an explicit cycles of concentration. Um, I do treat my tower uh, to control for scale buildup. Uh, my makeup water has a total dissolved solid concentration of 200 milligrams per liter, and I blow down water from the towers when the conductivity has reached 800 milligrams per liter. Based on those inputs, the tool estimates they achieve four uh, cycles of concentration. I do have a couple of ice makers uh, that use single pass cooling, but I've already accounted for those on a separate guest ice and laundry tab. Um, so I'm just going to include information about a refrigeration system and a point of use chiller that I have that both use single pass cooling. Uh, the refrigeration system uses uh, 1.5 gallons per minute. 
and it runs all day, every day, uh, all year round. My point of use chiller, on the other hand, flows at 0.8 gallons per minute, uh, and it's only used for half the year, um, but still uh, 24 hours a day for that half the year, so only put in 26 weeks. Uh, I don't have any steam boilers, so for now I'll select no to that question. And as you can see when I show my results, uh, my current water use is calculated, and as it indicates by the NA uh, for steam boiler, um, I don't have any water use because I don't actually have one. Uh, the best measured practices and potential water savings are also generated uh, for this tab. For example, the tool recommends that I work with a cooling tower water treatment venue, vendor to improve my cycles of concentration, and uh, it also provides a estimated water savings and cost savings by implementing this BMP. Another BMP similarly recommends they eliminate single pass cooling completely. Uh, as always, I, I could adjust the supporting data and assumptions at the bottom of this form uh, included in the red table if I have better data available. Uh, the last thing I wanted to point out is the Sources tab, which provides all the sourcing for the data and assumptions used throughout the tool. So that covers it for the demonstration. At this time, we'd like to open the floor for questions. So please type your questions into the chat box, and we will address them as they come in. And we already have a few questions. So <clears throat> attendees are wondering, if this tool is only for hotels, and are there similar tools available for other types of facilities like manufacturing plants? So this tool um, was created with hotels in mind specifically, but it can be easily used for other types of facilities. Um, we kind of had to pick one sector to focus on and to start with, but all of the equipment that is in um, another facility can be entered in the same way. Um, this uh, tool does not specifically include process water or any other uh, manufacturing type uh, water, industrial water use. So I would encourage you, there are other resources available uh, through the WaterSense website for uh, industrial water use, including uh, lean manufacturing processes to reduce water use in a factory. Um, but we expect to be uh, making this tool a little bit broader in the next um, year or so as we continue our water sense challenge and uh, we hope that it works for many of you so we can continue using it. Next question. So what is the source of the national averages provided in the tool? Um, there are various national averages uh, included throughout. If you go to the sources tab at the end, uh, depending which one you're looking for, uh, for example, if we're looking for the national average water rate or the utility rates, those are all based on um, the, the sources listed to the, to the right there. Um, for some of the annual occupancy rates um, and things like that, that's based on the 2013 uh, lodging industry profile uh, from the American Hotel and Lodging Association. So whichever defaults or assumptions you're looking for, it, they're all included on this, um, on the sources tab, and, and you should be able to point them out based on uh, the tab you're on and based on what the, the label of the actual data or assumption is. Great. Thanks, Robbie. Is there input for supply mineral content for the cycles of concentration potential? So we lump mineral content in uh, all as a general conductivity. Uh, we recommend that you work with a cooling tower maintenance contractor who's a professional um, and who can provide you with uh, facility specific information about what your your true maximum cycles are based on the, the incoming city water that, that you probably have. So um, yeah, one of, one of the, I think the first best measure practices that will come up as you fill it out, if you're, if you're not already using a, a cooling tower contractor, is to consult with one specifically that uh, deals with water efficiency as well. Perfect. So where can people download the tool, and is it available for anyone like consultants to use? The water use tool can be downloaded on the WaterSense website. Um, we have a page for the Hotel Challenge, uh, which is actually 
epa.gov slash watersense slash challenge and we have a tools and trainings button that will be on the right hand side and you just click on that and you'll see the resources that are available including the best management practices, the uh, recorded webinars from the rest of our series, and the water use tool as well as some case studies. And all of these tools and materials are available for anyone to use including um, we have some questions about consultants. Um, we don't discriminate. We uh, um, basically as the government we are working to give access to everyone to these tools. So we encourage you all to use it and um, give us as much feedback as you want um, so that we can learn how to make the tool better in the future. Sounds good. So have any national hotels or companies, brands signed on to utilize the water use tool? Well, um, since we just released the tool on Thursday of last week, we haven't had any um, specific hotels sign up yet, but we've been talking to several different uh, chains and different locations about it, and we're expecting to have uh, more people signed on now that it's actually up, on, up and running on the website. So Memorial Day weekend took a little bit of time out of that as well. So we expect to have others uh, pretty soon. Great. Well, it looks like that's all the questions for now um, about the water use tool, but we can answer anything else that comes in later. Um, oh, one more question just came in. So will you be collecting any results um, from the tool to get national averages? Well, uh, the answer to that is actually in the next section of our presentation. Uh, we are encouraging people to use the information that's collected in the tool, um, including their metered uh, water and energy use data, and upload that into the portfolio manager system. Um, we're not trying to create our own system um, when Energy Star already has such a great one in place. So. We are, that is um, our repository for data. So we are hoping, um, since as I'll speak to in a minute, there are many types of facilities already tracking water use that the information that is collected through this tool um, can help to inform that average over time uh, as well in the future. Great, so now we're going to launch two polls. The first poll asks if you plan to use the water use tool. Okay, great. Thanks for your responses. And the second poll asks if you would be interested in presenting a case study about your use of the tool and how it worked at your hotel. So as part of the hotel challenge, we would love to feature a success story sometime later this year about a hotel using the water use tool. And we're also featuring many different types of case studies from all different types of hotel facilities such as resorts or uh, standalone um, hotels or hotels with conference centers. So um, the more the merrier. We'd love to feature anything that you um, have that you'd like to share. All right. Great. So now let's move on to Tara's presentation of the Energy Star Portfolio Manager. All right. Thank you, Laura. So the Energy Star program has more than 87% brand recognition and is probably the best known for labeling energy efficient products like electronics and light bulbs and washers and dryers. However, the program also labels energy efficient homes and commercial and industrial buildings. 
Energy Star is also an EPA voluntary program that works to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by supporting superior energy efficiency. The efficiency of labeled buildings is assessed in part through the review of their energy meter, meter data, which they input into the free online tool called Portfolio Manager. So Portfolio Manager is an online measurement and tracking tool used by more than 325,000 buildings nationwide. People use the tool to track monthly energy and water consumption and to pull out calculated metrics to look at trends in consumption and spending over time. The database is a secure online environment and your data is never shared. The tool allows you to track energy as well as water intensity, utility costs, greenhouse gas emissions, and also allows you to monitor changes in your buildings over time. The tool currently tracks water efficiency normalized by square feet, though you can track other metrics in the tool and can use other normalizing factors instead if you wish. For example, some uh, use the number of rooms as a normalizing factor or the number of guest meals served per year. A very important aspect of Energy Star and Portfolio Manager is the focus on tracking actual energy and water use, not theoretical, modeled, or predicted consumption. This is very important because, as many of you have heard, you can't manage what you don't measure. Portfolio Manager provides a way to take that first step in assessing consumption so you can take more informed steps towards water efficiency. I also want to underscore that Portfolio Manager is both a management tool and a metrics calculator. As a management tool, it can be used to assess whole building energy and water consumption, track changes over time, share data with others, create and create reports. As a metrics calculator, Portfolio Manager helps organize and inform your energy and water management plans. The tool provides more than 150 metrics that you can use in your planning. If you want to open a Portfolio Manager account for free, you can get started at www.energystar.gov slash benchmark. So we won't go through the actual tool with you today because it's quite involved, um, just in terms of uh, the, some of the instructions that are here. It's actually quite easy once you're actually in the tool. Um, but I did want to point to some of the basic background information and resources in case you wanted to integrate your water benchmarking between Energy Star and WaterSense. And that's really the basis of putting this combined presentation together today. Energy Star has a basic quick start guide for Portfolio Manager on their training website, which you can review to get started. And you can either enter your meter data into Portfolio Manager directly and export it for your use in the water use tool to look at project level data, or you can enter your meter data into the water use tool and import it into Portfolio Manager afterwards. This is a screenshot from inside the tool. I just wanted to show you how easy it is once you set up your property and water meters to either upload new meter data or to pull the meter data you've recorded in the water use tool into Portfolio Manager. We're looking at meter data tab here where you can input monthly meter data. To upload data, click on the hyperlink spreadsheet template at the bottom of the screen. The spreadsheet is super simple and matches what is in the water use tool um, pretty closely so that we can use it um, very easily to transfer data back and forth. You can enter the start and end date of a meter. You can also put your usage in the units that you specify include your costs, and then the estimated value, whether it's actual or estimated. Then you save that, that spreadsheet, and then you upload it back into Portfolio Manager using the button on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Remember, you can take the data in the Water Use tool and put it directly into the saved spreadsheet and then upload it. You can also download water data from Portfolio Manager for use in the water use tool if you're already using Portfolio Manager. In some areas across the country, utilities and local governments are already tracking water and energy use data for commercial buildings in Portfolio Manager. So it is a very good opportunity to take this 
information and bring it uh, down to a project level with the water use tool and use them both together to manage your water and energy as effectively as possible. So for more information about using Portfolio Manager, you can check out the training website, which includes how-to documents and lists of all metrics in Portfolio Manager. There are also several live and recorded trainings uh, for Portfolio Manager, which are similar to this one, but much more in-depth. And the next one, um, the live training for Portfolio Manager will be held on June 24th of this year. You can use the link in this slide above to actually register for that presentation. We also have our guidelines for energy management, which are very similar with the same steps that are used in the water management planning best management practice in the WaterSense, uh, WaterSense at Work best management practices guidebook. There are also many different case studies from Energy Star's national building competition that you can use to spark your interest and inspiration. Great. Well, let's see if we have some questions coming in about Portfolio Manager. But while we're waiting, let's get a sense of who on the line is already using Portfolio Manager and also how many of you intend to use it in the future by responding to this poll. Great, thanks. So feel free to continue entering questions. But we had one um, wondering if the water use tool has been tested for use in iPads, because that would could be helpful on site. Um, well, currently we haven't tested it for use in iPads yet because of the macros that are needed to actually run the calculations. That is the exact reason why we created the water assessment worksheets. Um, we understand that people aren't necessarily going to carry a laptop around with them through a facility. So we um, encourage you to look at the sections that you actually need uh, for your assessment, and you can actually print out some of the actual worksheets and write on them. I know it's a little old school, but um, it's we made it as easy as possible um, based on the technologies that we have um, at our disposal. But we made it so that it's pretty easy to follow, and then that information is exactly what is entered into the Excel spreadsheet once you get back to your desk. So maybe sometime in the future we will. It might work on a Windows tablet. Uh, because it's a Microsoft Office product, uh, it might be a little bit more compatible with some of the new uh, Windows tablets that, that house Windows 8. So be worth trying, but we're not, <laughs> we don't verify that it definitely will. Not yet, but maybe once we've had it up and running for a little while, we can take a look at some of the other ways to actually deploy it. Um, and we're more than happy to take any suggestions that you have um, as you're actually using it. Is it true that only a professional engineer can use Portfolio Manager? Um, no, actually that is a professional engineer is used in the actual certification of a building or facility. So right now basically what happens is water, um, excuse me, Energy Star uh, uses the information that is input into Portfolio Manager to measure a building's performance against a, a basic uh, benchmark that's been created for that particular type of facility. So in order, to, anybody can do that, anybody can use it to track their information and to track their energy and water use. Um, the only time that a professional engineer comes into the picture um, officially is basically to actually certify the building to become a labeled um, Energy Star building, which requires it to be up to, uh, I believe, in the top 25 percentile of its building type in terms of performance. Um, so also, um, yep, the, I'm getting some information from our Energy Star counterpart. Um, 
and she's uh, reminding me that any any building of any kind can use a portfolio manager regardless of whether or not there is an Energy Star score for that type of building, and then they can get their uh, energy use intensity values, um, which are useful as well in general, just in terms of managing performance and uh, basically so that you can improve your performance over time. And so for the categories that there are uh, energy stir scores and labeling available, all uh, certified buildings must have a score of 75 or higher. So that's when the, per the professional engineer is used to uh, certify that the building does in fact meet those criteria and that the data is official. And there are um, some built-in verifications and other uh, things to make sure that the program is, uh, you know, tested and managed. So um, someone else is asking, does either tool equate to an ASHRAE Level 1 or Level 2 audit? Um, I would say that the uh, portfolio manager probably equates to a level one audit since it does collect data. I believe that that is um, the main component of a level one, um, a level one audit. And uh, basically, a level two audit is where you actually go and walk around a facility in addition to collect data on the specific facility um, systems and processes and uh, technologies. So. Um, I believe uh, we would have to check and get back to you, but I believe that the data tracking um, for the metering information would qualify as the level one, and then the walking around with the worksheets and the Excel tool would count as the level two version. So the last question we have is, are Energy Star benchmarking available as a table for building types instead of completing specific buildings? Um, I believe that there are, actually, there are several different um, trend uh, reports that have been pulled for Energy Star where they've actually gone in and pulled data for, um, you know, all different types of commercial buildings across the country, and that can give um, a general sense of the average water use in a hotel, for example, or the average energy use in a school, like a K through 12 school. Um, so there are many different resources available on the Energy Star website that I encourage you to check out. Um, there are also um, we've created a specific document on water data trends as a resource uh, that is posted on the energystar.gov slash data trends site where there's a summary of the medium water use intensity by building type. This is based only on a limited sample of buildings that are already benchmarking in Portfolio Manager. Um, so we're, that's one of the reasons why we've created this tool. Uh, the water use tool to try to get more information into Portfolio Manager to get more accurate averages and benchmarks. So currently the median hotel water use intensity is 55 gallons per square foot of air conditioned space. Any other questions? Well, it looks like that's our last question. So, Tara, let's go ahead and review the webinar. All right. As we've discussed at length, I think, um, the water use tool and the water assessment worksheets can help you identify and prioritize water efficiency projects within your facility. Then this information can also be used to set up a portfolio manager account and to track water use and energy use over time. The worksheets that we've created capture information about water using fixtures and equipment needed to populate the tool and provide instructions, guidance, and additional information about the fields in the tool. The tool itself provides water use estimates, savings estimates, and best management practice recommendations specific to your inputs. And then, as we've mentioned, the metering and billing tab of the water use tool is mimicked exactly to um, mirror Portfolio Manager Spreadsheet Uploader tool so the information can be easily copied and pasted into both places. You can enter your water data as well as your energy data into Portfolio Manager to track data over time 
and to help us create benchmarks in the future for your building type. So what you can do right now um, after this uh, webinar is over, so you can get started right away if you'd like, is to download and print the water use tool and water assessment worksheets from the WaterSense website. They are once again um, at this uh, at this link, which is under the WaterSense Challenge website, um, and then you can use these water, these worksheets to conduct a basic water assessment throughout your facility, and then populate the tool, the water use tool, with the information that you've gathered. You can then review and prioritize all of these projects and best management practices that are identified, so you can uh, figure out the best way to make these improvements over time. Finally, then make, sh make sure to copy the information from your metering and billing tab into Portfolio Manager to help us track and create those benchmarks over time. So if you found this webinar helpful, which I hope you all did, please plan to join us for our other upcoming technical webinars or listen to the ones that we have already recorded. In June and July, we'll discuss how to minimize water use in your mechanical and HVAC systems discuss education and outreach in your hotel, and talk about best management practices for commercial kitchens. All of the registration links are available on the Hotel Challenge website. Recordings for the four webinars we held in March and April are now available online as well. These webinars cover details on the Hotel Challenge and the basic uh, programmatic information about that, information on water management planning, and conducting a water assessment at your hotel, which fits in very well with the water use tool, as we talked about today, and also best management practices for sanitary fixtures, laundry equipment, and outdoor water use. We will post a recorded version of this webinar within the next few weeks for you to share um, or with your colleagues or to listen in again um, when you have time. So this uh, next slide provides the other resources that you may find helpful that we've talked about at different points throughout this presentation. This includes uh, the Water Census uh, Best Management Practices Guide that these uh, training webinars are based on, and also many resources about Portfolio Manager. Uh, specifically, I'll call your attention to the last bullet there. That is actually the Portfolio Manager Energy and Water Benchmarking Trends are the ones that we were just talking about in terms of uh, median uh, water use intensity and energy use intensity for specific building types. So I encourage you to look at that if you're interested in learning more about some of the basics um, for different building types across the country. And Hopefully, we will get some more information from all of you. Um, we'd love to hear from you if you are interested in sharing any of your experiences with this tool or with any of the other water projects that you've been doing, uh, especially those with hotels. Um, we are still looking for case studies uh, for some of our upcoming webinars, including one on commercial kitchen upgrades or employee education about water efficient practices. If you're interested in presenting a case study or know someone who would be a good person to uh, also make a presentation, uh, please type a message into your chat box right now or contact the Watersons Helpline and we'll connect you with the folks that are here working on the Hotel Challenge. So we'd also like to conduct one last poll to see if you found the content presented in this webinar helpful. Excellent. Well, thank you again for attending this presentation. Today's webinar was recorded, as I mentioned, and will be posted on the WaterSense website for future listening. And you'll also receive an email when it's available. So we encourage you to uh, forward this information to your colleagues who may be interested in this topic or in future topics of the Hotel Challenge. If you haven't already, uh, please remember to take the Hotel Challenge Pledge or tell the hotels that you're working with to take the pledge uh, so they can all receive tools of this kind that we're offering up to our participants. And also, um, we have some information on here uh, that talks directly to Energy Star's Buildings and Plants uh, program, and that's the part that is the counterpart of the commercial and institutional building program that we're working on here. So there are a great deal of resources available on their website. And 
We um, also are running a competition right now. The National Buildings Challenge through Energy Star is currently underway. And if you haven't heard of it before, I encourage you to check it out because there's a lot of great uh, projects happening and some really great ideas for different ways that water and energy can be reduced uh, throughout a facility. So we encourage you to get in touch with us if you have any additional questions. And we look forward to talking to you again at one of our upcoming webinars. Thank you and have a great afternoon.